All right, on this episode of Dockside TV, we're going to be fishing these bridges right behind me. It's World Series time for baseball, and what that means here in Lake Pontchartrain is the speckled trout move in for their annual World Series run. The items of choices for this episode was the trusty, very known Lemonhead and the Matrix Shad attached to the Black Platinum 3 8 Golden Eye. We just did a trilogy of hard bait episodes, and that bait box just went out to all our bait box subscribers of nothing but hard baits. This bait, this month's bait box is gonna be nothing but our Matrix Shad Soft Plastics. We might even have some Mega Matrix in there, the new four inch Matrix Shad. And this is gonna be what goes out in this month's bait box that's gonna be on sale Black Friday all the way through Cyber Monday. So if you're interested in a bait box, that's the four days you want to be purchasing one as it's on sale and we're going to ship it out in time to make sure it gets there for Christmas in case it's a Christmas present. Enjoy this episode of Dockside TV, fishing the World Series trout on the bridges in Lake Pontchartrain. trestle trout right there. That's the size of the fish that we're looking for. The famous World Series quote for the World Series trout is right on par. We just came through game five where Cole pitched a gym and the Strohs won. Come out the next day and we're finding speckled trout right here on the bridge. Another nice trout right before this train passes. Again on the lemon head. No monsters today, but this is a start to our World Series trout right here. A lot of 14 to 17 inches. I'm gonna get this one in the well while the train passes. Why is it that the trout show up on the bridges right around the World Series every year? I don't think it has anything to do with the actual baseball game. What it is, is that is the first time typically for the fall that water temperatures hit the 60 degree mark for the first time. And we've always said over my entire life of fishing out here that the magic temperature to get the fish moving to these concrete structures is the moment it hits 70 degrees. Optimal water temperature for these bridges, in my opinion, 62. It's probably peaked out prime time. And that just, that's the time of the year that the World Series is typically going on. The World Series is usually the kickoff point for it, and it really peaks out as we get into like the Thanksgiving time of the year. 
all the way into Christmas, just depending on how cold of a winter you're gonna have. about right there my fish bit it way behind the boat a lot of times when that happens if I get it multiple times in a row I'll just back the boat all make longer casts uh, and that's kind of the name of the game of playing the trestles is trying to figure out where your bites coming from some days they're tight to the pole some days they're way off and boat positioning is the key and being able to handle the trolling motor is very important why do we choose the lemon head today this is probably one of my most confident baits. We just had a tremendous blow come through. That little tropical storm, Olga, or whatever it was, very strange situation. It blew up overnight, right when we were doing Augusta's tent sale. Had water come up in the yard, come over to docks. So we're only out here two days after. I figured it'd be relatively stained. This is one of my favorite stained water trout baits. That's what we're rolling with. Water cloudy is not that bad though. You could get away with a few different colors today, but we're gonna stay with the lemon head. It's working. Catch a nice trout like this right here. And put this one in a well, see if we can get a few more. starting to bite a little bit. Started off the morning with some pretty turbulent conditions. Uh, the north end of the lake, we got a big north-northeast wind here. And um, the north end of the lake was a little dirty, but they had birds everywhere this morning. I was taking a peek at them, thought it may be birds hovering over some shrimp. Played with them for a few minutes, didn't really see anything, didn't catch anything but it was a good sign. It might be something to look forward to here in the future. Came down a little piece, the water cleaned up a little bit, started getting on some bites as we came down the bridge. But man, the wind this morning was just ferocious. As you can see it on the, the wind turbine by the solar panel, that thing was really cooking. I mean, it was pretty breezy morning, pretty, pretty tough conditions really today. We got a hard falling tide bucking against a pretty stiff north northeast wind it'd be perfect if the fish if i was getting some bites on the north end it'd be kind of calm there but all my bites are coming out further so we got to fight the chop live in the bering sea a little bit today and we're making it making it happen we got uh looks like the winds are starting to subside but as the northeast wind relaxes the tide's falling harder as the northeast wind will hold the falling tide up so if it's not one thing, it's the other. That's what makes Lake Pontchartrain so complicated to fish. It's, it's a very adverse conditions usually in here, but this is what this is what lives around these bridge pilings. All right, shedding the old jacket. The sun's finally getting up. Temperatures are warming some. But when we start wearing this jacket here. This is what tells me to come check the trestle. This is my winter jacket. Keeps me warm. When I gotta put that puppy on, that usually means it's trestle time. So when we came out the pass this morning, I was a little chilly. I figured good, good, as good a time as ever to give the trestle its first peak of the year. And sure enough, we're greeted with some nice fish. crushed it before it ever even hit the bottom. Oh yeah. That'll show you to, I never jigged that lure. As you can see in that clip, I cast it out, was waiting for it to get to the bottom. I felt my whole line jump, boom. We called that, he thumped it. I love when they bite like that. What that shows you, 
That is the motion in that matrix shad. That shows you the action in that lure. I never even had to pop it. That's what makes a matrix shad so effective and such a great bait to fish deep water, kind of your vertical jigging. Because when it falls back down to the bottom, that swimming motion of the natural gravity is so realistic. I mean, I literally had to do nothing with that lure just now, but cast it out there. When fishing the trestle, you want to decide which side of the bridge of the fish. And that means the east side, the west side, the north side, the south side. And there's a lot of different variables that come into play to make it decide which section to start on or which side of the bridge to fish, whether we go under it or stay on the east side. So today I started in close on the north end, north, wind was blowing out the north. I typically start there as it's closer to the boat launch or closer to the house. You know, you always want to check what's close first. Had plenty of birds diving, a little bit of stained water, not too much going on. So. Typically, if it's a hard north wind, all you can really fish is from about mid lake north, or it's just going to get too rough. Today, it wasn't that terribly rough. It just made it a little bit harder the further south we went, fishing in the waves and the chop, but sometimes that's what you have to do. Now, as far as the east and the west side goes, I really favor the east side on a fallen tide. I like to cast into the current and work the lure back with the current. Now I've had plenty of days where it goes against that theory and we do better on the west side on a fallen tide. But on a hard, ooh, ooh. Don't like him there. hold on, hold on. Oh, no. Pants pulled down, telltale sign if that was a bite. But when the tide's falling real hard like it is today, it's gonna be really hard to fish that western side. Now if the tide slowed up some, maybe I'd give the backside a look. Or if the tide changed and started coming in, I'm definitely going to move to the other side. I just really like fishing with the tide, working the lure back with the tide. So typically south, southeast winds, south side, north, northeast winds, north side. Right now I'm finding a fish about mid middle of the lake fine but when you get a lot of wind the middle of the lake is really hard because it could be blowing 15 or 20 out the south you can get on the south shore and be protected same thing with the north shore out of the north but the fish are in the middle of the lake today we are fighting the elements catching pretty speckled trout like this one right here on our favorite, good old trusty lemon head, three eighths ounce black platinum jig head. When fishing a trestle, oh, there he is. We'll go over the technique in a minute. Another one from the box. Just gonna throw him on the floor go over this technique here. Not much has changed. You know, the word's kind of out on how you do this with plastic. <clears throat> You're just going to throw at the bridge, let a little bit of slack out. It takes about eight seconds to hit the bottom. You can figure it's about a second for every foot deep. So eight to 12 feet, depending on the tide, hits the bottom, or to begin your retrieve. That's what a three eight ounce jig head on a three inch lure. The lighter the jig head, the longer it's gonna take. The heavier the jig head, the faster you get down. Now, I could probably get away with a half ounce jig head today because the tide's really ripping and it would help me maybe get that bait down to the bottom <clears throat> a little bit closer to the pollens because what happens is when you throw it up on the pollens, you got a big tide. So I'm gonna throw it up there. The harder the tide, the harder, it's, the faster it's going to move it off the bridge before it hits the bottom. A lot of times them fish are right up on the bridge. So, 3 eighths is the typical weight we use. 
I have dropped down to a 5 16 on very light condition uh, tides, and we do bump it up to a half ounce on heavy tides. Just gonna bump it a few times, pop, 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 rail in your slack, let it get back down to the bottom. Do that three or four times till it gets about in line with the boat, rail it in, you're just gonna continuously do the same thing over and over and over. Some days they're right in front of the pollen, some days they're left, right, some days they're way out off the boat, and it's up to you. It's your job to try to figure out the pattern. Every day, once you figure out what they're kind of doing, they're gonna, you know, most of your bites are gonna come the same, the same way. And when you see me lean over like that, that means I'm just trying to give the lure a little bit more slack to keep contacting the bottom. If you're not contacting the bottom, you can forget it. Bouncing the bottom is the key to these fish out here. 95 out of 100 times are close to the bottom. You know, the trollers catch them very good out here, but they, they have so much line out or they're using that lead core line where they're getting that bait down towards the bottom half of the water column. There he is right there. He's starting to bite a little bit. Good little jump, starting to bite a little bit here. So, we went over several techniques, time of the year, water temperature, how windy it was, what's the tide doing, so on and so forth. Showed several fish on camera, and now it's time to pop the camera off, take it easy, enjoy the beautiful day and this nice falling tide, and chunk some more lemon heads up against the bridge pylons of the Lake Pontchartrain trestle. The old trusty trestle. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dockside TV. Hope you subscribe to our Matrix Bait Box. This is one of the items that will most certainly be in the next Matrix Bait Box. And this is the old trusty lemon head on a 3 8 ounce black platinum golden eye jig head. Until next time, good fishing. Make sure you subscribe to Dockside TV. Close.